In the previous chapter, we discussed the descent tower theory and an alternative theory about the forward tower, exploring how it could have moved northeast of the hypo center. We compared the descent tower's theory to various others, including the surface tower's theory. But what exactly are the surface towers? In this video, we will delve into the surface tower's theory and its connection to the breakup of the RMS Titanic, taking into account survivor testimonies and correlating them with the current state of the wreck site. The surface tower theory suggests that both the forward and aft towers fell while the Titanic was on the surface. This theory accounts for survivor testimonies describing the ship breaking into three sections, or portions of the ship falling into the sea immediately after the breakup. It was introduced to explain the observations of those who witnessed the sinking in various ways and in terms of the breakup. The origin of the surface tower theory is not precisely known but it began to take shape when pieces of the superstructural debris were discovered. The aft tower was identified in the year of 1985 when the bow and stern sections were initially found. It gained more attention during an expedition than in the 1990s. The forward tower was discovered during an expedition in the year of 2004, along with the aft and forward double bottoms. These discoveries enabled historians to piece together the full structure of the ship and develop a more comprehensive understanding of the ship's sinking and breakup. Prior to delving into the theory, let us understand how the towers formed and what made them form in the first place, and the roles they played in the ship's breakup, explaining to what the survivors saw, which will be followed in, in one of the chapters. Now let's talk about the towers and how they formed. The Titanic was famously claimed to be unsinkable by the media. One of the ship's greatest features was its expansion joints. Similar to those found in buildings, these mid-structure separations were designed to relieve stress on the structure caused by environmental factors. For instance, the RMS Aquitania equipped with expansion joints successfully navigated through a storm. In such conditions, rough waves subject to the ship's intense stress, which could potentially cause damage. The expansion joints allowed the ship to distribute and regulate this stress by expanding if the ship experienced hogging. This prevented damage to the vessel. Without these expansion joints, a ship could fracture or in worst case scenario, break apart and sink. Regarding how the ship's breakup relates to the function of the expansion joint, it is important to note that the expansion joint did not cause the breakup, but rather played a part in it. The purpose of the expansion joint is to relieve stress especially in rough conditions such as storms. However, in the case of the Titanic, the stern rising high out of the water experienced increased stress which worsened as the stern continued to ascend and rise from the sea. The expansion joint did not cause the breakup directly. Instead, its function somewhat contributed to the process. The joint's role is to equalize stress and prevent the ship from fracturing or breaking by expanding. In the case of the Titanic, the stress radiated and spread instead of concentrating in one area. This effect intensified as the Titanic reached angles of 20 to 30 degrees high out of the water. As the stern rose, the stress transferred to the next weakest or the closest weakest area among the deckings and the superstructure of the ship where the failure was beginning to occur, causing fractures and cracks to form, which then occurred in different places on parts of the ship as the stress was distributed due to the expansion joint, eventually then leading to the formation of the superstructural towers. Evidence of this can be seen in a piece of the wreck known as the Big Piece, which shows that cracks originated in multiple areas. We can say this as observing the wreck. The main crack or fracture in the bow is located just before the third funnel area. 
The big piece is located near the aft engine or skylights if attempted to puzzle back into its original place in the ship. Additionally, if you attempt to piece together the wreck, it becomes apparent that at least 75 to 100 feet of the ship is missing. The fracture point near the stern is located just before the fourth funnel, indicating that a middle section is missing, which then leads us to the towers, as these towers are one of the missing middle. This already includes and accounts for the double bottom and the other deck below. The origin of the surface tower theory is somewhat obscure and confusing. Through thorough research, the theory can be traced back to around the year of 1998 to 1999, where it appears for a brief moment in the documentary Titanic Answers from the Abyss. Although the documentary focuses on a different theory, something akin to the 1995 theory, However, it surprisingly involves the towers in a manner similar to the descent tower sinking theory. In the following decade, a similar theory emerged, but it did not gain much traction, partly because the original website hosting it is no longer available. Only images of the sinking theory circulate on the internet, with origins identified as belonging to Park Stephenson a titanic historian. The theory also appears briefly in the documentary Titanic The Final Word shown on a TV screen for a second and hinted in the 2006 documentary of the Titanic alongside the Roger Long theory. However, the surface tower theory was mainly popularized by the book On a Sea of Glass. This book often referred to by titanic enthusiasts and historians as quote unquote the Bible of the Titanic. It provides comprehensive information about the ship from its inception to its tragic demise. In the book, Appendix N, The Breakup, it delves into the critical moments when the ship began to break apart. The authors collected and analyzed various survivor testimonies to piece together a coherent narrative. For example, one survivor might say the ship broke in half in three sections. Another survivor might say it broke amidships. And another might say it broke forward of the fourth funnel. How do these differing accounts make sense together? Let's take these examples. I was paying so much attention. Could you see the boat well after you pulled away from her? You could see her when the lights were clear, and then until she gave the final plunge. Did the boat go into pieces or come in two? She parted between the third and fourth funnels. What makes you say that? The, fourth part, mo the foremost part was gone, and it seems as if the engines were all gone out. You could see the fourth part was all gone, and could see the stern come up horizontal. Yes, sir. After the fourth part had disappeared, the stern, the stern came up and was horizontal with the surface of the water. Yes, sir. When the third funnel had nearly disappeared, I heard four explosions which I took to be the bursting of the boilers. The ship was right up on end then. Suddenly, she broke in two between the third and fourth funnels. The after part of the ship came down in the water in its normal position and seemed as if it was going to remain afloat. But it only remained a minute or two and then sank. I was facing the Titanic and could see her going down. I saw the lights go out deck after deck. When the water got into the engine room there was an explosion and then I saw the Leviathan part in the middle. Then she went down slowly, amid heartrending cries for help of hundreds of doomed men and women. We could see the port lights go under one by one until there was an awful explosion of the boilers bursting, and then the ship seemed to break right down the middle, and after a bit, go down. When it did go down, we heard terrible screams and cries from people who were going down with the boat.
Recognising that the Titanic was fast settling down, the crew pulled vigorously to get beyond the region of a possible vortex. Suddenly, there was a terrible crash, and, a gr and the great ship appeared to split in twain, if not in three distinct sections. The rendering of our timbers and steel plates making a noise that carried terror into the hearts of all. The end came swiftly, one of the funnels toppled over the side, and the bow parted just in line with the bridge. The ship sank steadily until just at the last, when it plunged rapidly. Just before going down, it seemed to rip, breaking into the three parts into which it was divided. First, the middle seemed to go down, lifting bow and stern into the air. Then it twisted the other way, throwing the middle up. Finally, the bow went under and it plunged stern last. With these testimonies differentiating and contraindicating each other, how will it work? How will it make sense? And how will it account for survivors having different perspectives or the way they describe the breakup? The authors correlated these testimonies with an understanding of the wreck site. Earlier, we discussed the superstructural towers. And in terms of this, the authors were knowledgeable about these wreck debris and superstructural towers. They pieced together the survivor accounts with the concept that the ship broke into more than two pieces. The concept of the ship breaking into three pieces accounts for all the testimonies based on how survivors described on what they said they saw. The ship breaking into three sections accounts for the following testimonies. The survivors who saw the ship break amidships would have witnessed the initial breakup. The quote-unquote initial breakup is when the ship broke in the middle, which explains the majority of testimonies seeing the ship break between her four funnels or in the middle. And for those who saw the ship break between the last two funnels could relate to the surface tower theory as that section appeared to break off from the stern, or the forward tower, per se. This creates an illusion of some sort to make it appear it broke between the third and fourth funnels. Lastly, overall, the ship's breakup sequence involving multiple fractures and cracks forming explains the various accounts of multiple breakups or sections breaking off which indicates that these survivors witnessed the entirety of the breakup sequence of the RMS Titanic. In terms of the overall theory, it effectively accounts for and explains the survivor testimonies, which explains the discrepancies of what they said they saw, but it fails to adequately address the location of the wrecked debris. As discussed in the previous episode, the surface tower theory fails to explain the position of the forward tower. Structurally, the tower weighing between 700 to 1,100 tons could not have drifted or moved independently 250 to 300 feet away from the hypo center. The discrepancy raises questions about the theory's accuracy and explaining the wreck's current state. However, the surface tower theory is the closest in helping us understand the survivor's account of multiple breaks and different perspective of the ship's breakup. We may never truly know what happened during the ship's breakup, but exploring different theories provide valuable insight into the Titanic's history and its tragic sinking. By examining various theories, we can piece together a more comprehensive understanding of the events.